You know what the word Chernobyl actually means in Russian? I just found this out a couple of days ago. It means wormwood. Now, those of you who come out of the crazier versions of evangelical Christianity probably already figured out where I'm going with this. So I'm just going to have to ask you to sit tight for a minute while I catch everybody else up. Because wormwood, in addition to being the plant that gives us all the happy parts of absinthe and vermouth, is also the name that John gives to the first star that falls from heaven in the book of Revelation. Here's the relevant passage. So John has the seven angels. They're all blowing their various trumpets to herald the start of the apocalypse. And when he gets to the third one, he says this. This is Revelation 8, 10, and 11 from the King James Version. Quote, And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as if it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of that star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. End quote. Now, we atheists have a lot of fun with dumbass biblical claims like stars falling from the earth. But if you imagine that you were a dude in the first century and you're trying to get your head around the concept of a nuclear disaster, a star falling to the earth is actually a pretty good analogy, right? Even more so if you're like an angel who understands nuclear physics, but you have to explain nuclear disaster to said first century prophet. You know, likewise, a person who couldn't have understood the concept of radioactivity could be forgiven for saying that the fallen star just made the waters bitter. Now, you got to admit, that's a pretty wild coincidence, right? Like, we're all rationalists here, so we know how coincidences work, but it's still pretty impressive. It's, it's the exact kind of thing that would have stopped 27-year-old Noah in his fucking tracks. And it's the kind of thing that, if taken in isolation, would sound pretty convincing as evidence that there just might be something to biblical prophecy. Now, to be clear, it is not evidence of that, right? <laughs> Recall that this is the third angel. So the order of operations here was supposed to be one, a global flaming storm of bloody hail. Yes, that's flaming and it's hail that was supposed to burn up a third of all the trees and all the green grass. Two, a flaming mountain falling into the ocean and turning one third of the water into blood. Three, a star named Wormwood falling from the heavens and turning the waters bitter. And even if you allow that God made a last minute change to the batting order, the prophecy says that Wormwood is going to turn one third of all water bitter. And Ch Chernobyl was a terrible disaster, don't get me wrong, but it was a long way from that. And on top of all that, this shit happened in 1980 fucking six, right? We're still waiting for that fourth angel to darken the, a third of the sun and the stars. But despite all of that, this little nugget is still being offered up as evidence of both biblical inerrancy and the impending apocalypse. I mean, I wasn't exactly taking a Russian language lesson when I learned about this. And, and, and I see why. I see why they used that. Even with all the holes that I just poked in it, I see why apologists and fear mongers want to use this one, because when I first heard it, despite my commitment to logic and my long study of fallacious thinking, I was impressed, right? Like at first, like my instinctual response was, this is too profound to be a fluke. Now, luckily, my brain kicked in pretty quick and chased that thought away, right? It's, it's not like we don't have other equally impressive examples that come from other sources. right? There's a prophecy from Nostradamus that seems eerily prescient about the Second World War if you ignore the very clear fact that he's talking about a river called Hister not getting spell checked on the word Hitler. But, you know, it, it, it's the same way that you have to ignore the fact that John the Elder is clearly referencing the bitterness of Wormwood to make this one work. Right. And, and Muslim apologists love to trot out some Quranic prophecy or another that seems to know way more about embryology than Muhammad could have known at the time. But but we don't even have to resort to mystics and holy scribblings to get there. Right. We have countless examples just like this from the fucking Simpsons. Right. But, but as much as the ubiquity of these coincidences should disarm them, our pattern seeking gullibility is so ingrained that we instead try to argue that the fucking Simpsons is also prophetic. Ultimately, though, the whole Chernobyl means wormwood thing is evidence against the accuracy of biblical prophecy, not for it, because I can guarantee you that at some point in the future, those stars are going to line up even better. Yeah, some new event will come along that's even more instinctively profound in its accordance with biblical prophecy, not because the Bible is accurate, but because things are constantly happening, right, all over the goddamn place. It's the statistical certainty, especially given the leniency that religious people interpret their holy books with. And when it happens, somebody is going to present it to you and they're going to say, see, just like it says here in the Bible. Now, how do you explain that? Of course, in truth, it's just it's not in need of explanation. They've got way more than a thousand monkeys. They've had way more than a thousand years and biblical prophecies are no Shakespeare. But if you do feel like explaining it, what better evidence could you have than another time the Bible just happened to line up with reality and then it didn't lead anywhere? 
right? Because as you may have noticed, the rapture didn't happen in 1986, nor did it happen in 1993 after seven years of tribulation. Biblical prophecies have failed to materialize in the past. They will fail to materialize in the future. And as much as it should go without saying, apparently Christians still need to be reminded that this is not a point in their win column. 